Tonight, Vincent van Dijk will be staying at a small family-run hotel in Amsterdam. He'll be living out of a suitcase until the end of the year. That's when his project comes to an end. The 36-year-old is writing a blog about his experiences in Amsterdam's hotels. One day uh, I was still uh, sleeping in my bed and, uh, and a cleaning lady came uh, and took away uh, my sheets and then she realized that I still was in the bed. I just was laughing and I, I thought, oh my God, this is a nice story to write about. <laughs> Vincent works in advertising. After more than 11 months, he's grown used to life as a hotel nomad. I used to have a lot of stuff uh, which I never used. And uh, when I was moving to, from the one house to the other house, you carry with you all diplomas, photos, books you never use anymore. And so I, I threw away everything and it feels like uh, zen. <laughs> He moved from The Hague to Amsterdam in autumn 2009 because his company had opened a new office there. The PR professional came up with the idea for his project when he started realizing how hard it was to find an apartment. I just called some hotels and uh, told uh, them about my idea, writing a book, uh, writing stories about hotels, and uh, they were really enthusiastic about that plan because they had a quite a hard time to, uh, because of the economical situation. Even though nearly five million tourists descend on Amsterdam every year, most of the city's 369 hotels always have rooms available. Vincent van Dijk's blog might change that. Amsterdam's hotel managers are always getting together at various receptions and they always talk about Vincent. They want to know which hotels he's been to, what he said about them, was his review positive, and they always say what a nice young man he is. In the early days, Vincent van Dijk would plan his hotel accommodation weeks in advance. But these days, he's a lot more spontaneous. Even so, he generally has no trouble getting a room, apart from one night during the peak summer season. Except one night, the whole city was full. Uh, also, Schiphol Airport was uh, full. Uh, uh, and then I partied all night with my friends. <laughs> and I checked in the next morning uh, very early in the other hotel. Tonight, he's looking forward to a night in a luxury hotel. He gets a personal welcome from the hotel director, who tells him straight away that he won't have to pay for his stay. It's going to be a very interesting way of reviewing the hotels. Very personal experience. Uh, one person experiencing all these hotels, so it's, it's one viewpoint. So I think it'll be an interesting review and also it gives a good insight of what's available, what's, uh, what is there, what is not there, what can we improve on as hoteliers here in Amsterdam. So he gets as positive an impression of the hotel as possible. He's given the royal suite. The hotels are anxious to please and have even sponsored clothes, luggage and computers. He also gets his laundry done for free. Vincent van Dijk rarely misses his old life. I'm much more relaxed than I used to be the last years. And uh, I feel really healthy and now. Although I've got a very busy schedule, I've worked like 18 hours a day, I haven't been ill the whole year. That's amazing. So I think I really changed. One thing he's learned is that the most expensive hotels aren't necessarily the best ones. He's become a connoisseur of good service and feels it's the details that matter most. It's funny, I always get a lot of little presents in hotels, sometimes a table full of presents, but I never take it with me because I can't carry it in my suitcase. Vincent van Dyck has now received invitations from hotels in Paris, New York, and Rio de Janeiro. But he wants to stay in Amsterdam. Next year, he'll be writing up his recent experiences in a book. It's more than 350 stories, so it's, it's, it's more than a Bible. And the publisher says, it's too much information. <laughs> we have to pick out the nice stories, and uh, that will be hard to make a selection of all uh, stories. He doesn't really know what he'll do when he's finished the hotel project, but he doesn't think he could ever live in a house again. For now, his plan is to spend New Year's Eve in a luxury hotel, 
and the next night in a homeless shelter.